Hey guys and welcome to Functional Print Friday and welcome to my driveway. We gotta make something for this trailer. Let me show you. So longtime subscribers to the channel might remember that we've actually done some stuff to this trailer already. This has TPU bumpers down here on the bottom of the side rails to keep them from rattling on the side and also to raise it up a little bit. There is three of those along the side. Same thing on the other side and then also here on the back rail are some TPU mounts for what is basically just one of those driveway marker sticks on each side and that makes the back of the trailer visible when I'm trying to back up. And lastly, these rubber bumpers down here that the trailer sits down on when it comes all the way down were originally made out of like a hard rubber and they cracked and started to fall apart and we remade those out of TPU. But what I want to look at today is actually up here on the front of the trailer and maybe you can already guess what it is. So I stopped it here before it actually hits that, but the tailgate wants to come all the way down and strike the top of this riser on the front of the trailer. And I've wanted to do something about this for a while, and so far I have been fortunate enough to remember that I can't put the tailgate down with this here, but I've come close a couple of times, and fortunately the tailgate has like that slow drop, and I've, I've caught it on two or three different occasions. And I even thought about 3D printing something for the top of this before, but I just couldn't wrap my head around how I was gonna make it soft enough to you know, do any less damage than just running into the steel that's already here. Now I guess I could probably just tape a piece of foam over this and call it a day, and that would probably work fine for today, and maybe even the next time I use the trailer, but it's not gonna stay there forever. And you guys know that I prefer solutions that are more you know, permanent or things that I just don't have to think about again once I've solved it. And this weekend, a friend over, and he was telling me about how he crunched the back of his tailgate on his trail, and it reminded me that I still hadn't solved that problem on mine. And I think with that TPU that we can vary the durometer of it depending on the temperature and the flow rate, I think we can probably make something that's actually soft enough to go on the top of this. I've got kind of an idea in my head of what I want to put up here, but before we can start drawing, obviously we need the dimensions of the profile of this steel channel. So I'm gonna go grab my tape. I'm just gonna get some rough dimensions. Usually these steel channels like this are a standard size available from like multiple steel suppliers and usually you can find like a DXF of the profile of it and I'm hoping we can do that and work from there. So I'm gonna get some dimensions, start drawing, and I'll bring you guys back. All right and here is the initial design just for our you know, sort of test piece to slip over that steel C channel to see if we have the right shape. That's all this is gonna be. And I was a bit disappointed to find that I couldn't seem to locate a drawing for the steel C channel. It doesn't seem to conform to any like standard size uh, steel C channel that's available. So I did find that same part, like that upright available on lots of different sites that sell like trailer parts or parts for making trailers. And they all look kind of similar, but you know, again, the actual shape doesn't seem to conform to any standard uh, steel that you can buy. So I don't know if they're cutting a box section in half or if they're starting with a steel flat and bending it and then drilling the holes, like I'm honestly not sure, but I think we're kind of on our own for figuring out this shape. So I'm gonna print this one out. We'll see how close we are. All right, let's see how we did. It's close. Uh, maybe not. This is too wide here. It kind of starts to go on on this side. But this side, yeah, that's actually off at quite the angle there. This one seems to be bent out more on this side than this side. And I didn't realize there's actually a slight curvature here too. All right, well this one clearly does not fit. Let's see how the thickness is. And we're close on the thickness. So, all right, I'm gonna keep iterating this. I probably won't bring you back for each one. These are quick prints. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take a picture top down on this and then I'll just adjust from that in CAD and just keep iterating until it fits. All right, we got it. And that took, um, you know, just a few more tries than I anticipated. Probably should have stopped when I realized that this channel was not like a standard size and maybe 3D scan this instead, but we did get there and this actually fits really well. It's, I thought at first I was still gonna need to make a small adjustment, but actually it's just snug all the way around. Like it's truly fits pretty much perfectly 
all the way around and I'm really happy with that. So now I gotta think about how I go from this shape to what I want our actual final design to be. All right, here's all the different test pieces that I iterated with until we got to the final one that fit. And if I drag this one over and pop it here next to the first one, you can see just how different they really are. Some of the changes are quite subtle, but the sweeps in these curves and particularly the angle of this section over here, and this one actually knocks out a little bit as well. This is curved up here, it's curved up here, and it thins out here. And that makes sense if they're making this from a piece of flat bar, the steel actually ends up thinner here because this part of the steel has to sort of uh, thin out to be able to make this bend. And this radius is different than this radius. This radius is different than this radius. You guys get the idea. All right, so here is the basic idea for this. The first thing I did is just kind of take that design, sort of round it off and extrude it up uh, to the thickness that I want. And then here is what we're actually gonna print right now. Now, this is still not the final design. Let me just move this over so we have a little more room to see. The final design is not gonna have a hole through it like this, but I wanna make sure that we have actually positioned this hole in the right place. I've measured it to the best of my ability with uh, calipers, but I don't know for sure that that's gonna line up just because I'm not entirely sure that the top of this is actually flat. We haven't actually tested that. So I'm gonna print this in just plain old PLA. Should be a pretty quick print. And what we'll do is we'll pop it on there and we'll see if these holes line up because ultimately what I wanna do is again, have no bores through this, but instead in the same position where this hole would be, have like some sort of uh, nub or key that sticks out uh, of here so that as it goes down, it sort of flexes out, like this wall would flex outward and then that that uh, that nub would sort of key into place and lock this guy down on the, uh, the top of that riser. If we just had this as a solid piece, honestly, it probably wouldn't fly off on its own just given how nice of a snug fit we're gonna have on this, but I do wanna make sure that it is solidly retained on there so that I'm not littering or leaving something that somebody's gonna run over with their car. So, all right, I'm gonna print this out. Let's see how close we got. All right, our test piece is done and looks like it came out pretty good. And the holes are clean all the way through, so we should be able to see if we are in the right spot or if we need to make an adjustment. And I kind of forgot about how much bridging we were gonna have on the inside, but it looks like it bridged across that no problem. So let's see if it fits. Which starts on there. It's snug though. Yeah, it goes down. You know, I'm worried it's gonna get stuck. This is just Windex. Hopefully this will act as a lubricant without getting everything all greasy. Oh yeah. Oh, that went all the way down. Yeah, look at that. Actually, I think this side is pretty much dead on. It looks like the other side is off a little bit, but I don't think that's gonna matter. You guys will see what I mean once I show you the final design for this, which since this fits, I'm gonna go work on, I'll bring you back. All right, and here is what I hope is our final design for this. And it is pretty much the same as the solid PLA test piece that we just made, except I did go ahead and delete those bores that went all the way through the part. So there's nothing at all on this intersection here. And on the outer section where those bores came through, I replaced them with beveled nubs that will hopefully uh, lock into those holes in that steel channel riser. And if you think about what's gonna happen when I push this down over, hopefully this part of the geometry just sort of bends outward to allow that nub to kind of uh, ramp up the bevel and then lock into place and same thing on this side. So let me pull this over into Bamboo Studio because it's probably a little easier to understand what's going on inside this part when you see it sliced. And here's that part sliced in Bamboo Studio. And if you're wondering why you're seeing three different colors, that's because where I have modifiers built in here to change the durometer of the material, since we're gonna be using that same Soriatek TPU Air that we have used in the past that varies anywhere between, I think, 66A and 82A shore hardness, it makes it really obvious in the preview to just sort of see where those transitions are to make sure that they align with the right spots in the part to get the performance of the material that we want. So if I go down through this, you can see the bottom of this, the darker color represents the highest durometer. So this is around 82A, I think. And that comes up through the majority of the part where it sits on that steel channel, including uh, those nubs in their entirety. So this is gonna be pretty stiff. That said, I think it's still gonna flex enough that, these, that this can sort of flex out here for that nub to clear the hole and then spring back into place. 
But before we get up to the top of the steel channel, we transition into the, I think this is 75A. And this actually goes up above where it caps off the top of that channel. And this is kind of like a security layer because this is still gonna be pretty stiff, but nowhere near as stiff as this bottom layer and nowhere near as stiff as the steel. So, you know, if we do compress the soft top layer at the top, we've got sort of this security layer where it's gonna be a lot harder for that to compress until we're actually pressing the tailgate against that steel channel, but it's, it should still have a fair amount of give. And as I scroll all the way up here, you can see now we get into that really, really soft layer. And I actually added a modifier for uh, the infill and brought it down to 10% here as well. There's two walls all the way down through the part. I didn't want to go with less than two walls at the top because even though the stuff is pretty durable, because we're only at 10% for the infill, I wanted to make sure that we didn't you know, tear through the edge just as something hard bumps against this. But again, with gyroid infill and 10% and all the way down at I think a 66 shore hardness, the top of this ought to be pretty soft. If you guys are interested in the details of how you bring in the different filament profiles and actually get the different durometer hardness out of this material here in Bamboo Studio, maybe we can take a look at that next week. Let me know down in the comments. If enough people are interested, maybe we'll take a look at that. I can show you how I pull the profiles uh, off of Sariatech's website or how you can pull the profiles off really any website that they share filament profiles. Uh, import them into Bamboo Studio, turn them into user preferences for filament and then actually put the modifiers in here to get this result. So again, let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in. Maybe we can take a look at that next week. But let's get this printed, see if it works. All right, our final print is done and it looks Fantastic. I mean, I could probably nitpick some small details here. Like I set the seam to nearest whenever I print on this material to minimize the travel moves. So we can see little pox here. Looks like where there was a seam. And I can see a little bit of, it actually shows more on camera than I can even feel it or see it in the natural light here in the shop. But this is also artifacts of that seam there as well. But otherwise, this looks fantastic. And I was a little bit worried about it bridging down inside there or how the geometry would work out for those little nubs, but it looks really good. And this is way softer than I thought that we would get. In fact, I'm almost a little worried that maybe I should have increased the infill up here in the top. Like this is like pillow soft. So let's go try it. All right, it is about 8 p.m. on Friday, the same day this video is supposed to come out. So hopefully this fits. Looks like it's going. Oh, I just heard those nubs kind of click into place, I think. So are we even all the way around? Yeah, that looks like it's seated all the way down. I sized this to come right down to the top of the welds here from this bracing. And it's, you can kind of feel it moves maybe like one to two millimeters and you can kind of feel that nub hit and it stops. Now, this is flexible enough at the bottom. I'm pretty sure we could get this off. Yeah, I can kind of pry in there a little bit to get those to release and get this to pop off, but it definitely does not come off on its own. Let me sit you guys in the tripod. Let's try the tailgate. All right, hopefully I don't regret this, but I am not gonna stop the tailgate with my hand. I'm just going to open it and let it come down. All right, well, I just uh, accidentally performed a, uh, a full load test on this, more or less. I didn't realize that once the tailgate is part way down, it doesn't have that soft drop. I picked it up and I let it go and it fell hard onto the top of this. And I don't think it did any damage. That honestly scared me. I did not mean to do that, but I don't see, I mean, it, it kind of sounded like it hit pretty hard, but I don't see anything in the tailgate. It's a little dirty. That's impressive. Yeah, I think the progressive settings in the TPU honestly really saved us because it's pillow soft at the top. I'm gonna to take some force to push it down. And I guess if you're pushing the whole thing down, yeah, it's a fair amount. 
but you can really feel like if I push down on just a section of it, you can really feel when you hit that next durometer. Uh, it firms up quite a bit without actually letting it drop all the way down to that, uh, that channel rail in there. It's interesting. I don't know if you guys caught that. Where I pushed down really hard all the way to that other layer with my finger, it kind of left an indent. It took about 15 to 20 seconds to disappear. I wonder if maybe we're pushing the air out of like pockets of the infill. It takes a little while to go back in because now it's perfectly flat again. Well guys, I'm really happy with the end result we got with this. Yeah, it took some trial and error, as these things usually do, but we did get there in the end. And I am a little frustrated with myself. By the time I got to the second one of these and realized just how complex the bends were in that part, and I really wanted a tight fit, I should have just stopped and 3D scanned it. In fact, just a couple days ago, this actually arrived from Creality. This is their new Raptor Pro scanner. I haven't even taken the, uh, the sticky things off this yet. This probably would have done a really good job scanning that so I didn't have to iterate it 17 times. If there's anything that you would have done differently or you have a question or you just want to yell at me for not 3D scanning it, you can do that down in the comments. Thanks for tuning into this week's video and thank you so much to my patrons who support the content on this channel. I give all the STLs away for everything that we do here on the channel for free, but patrons get exclusive access to some other perks as well. And they also get all of the source design files and the 3MFs that you can import right into Bamboo Studio and just hit the print button. So if you're able to support the channel, check out my site fpfdesigns.com and that link is down in the description of the video if you wanna check it out. And if this is by chance your first time here on the channel, this is all we do. It's all functional 3D printing and the design and engineering that is related to that. So if you're into that sort of thing, check out some of the other videos on the channel. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.